Welcome to this second video regarding the notes about the converse of transversal results. In this video we will look at two examples and demonstrate how we can use these theorems to solve for different angle measures. The first of the two problems is currently pictured on the screen. One of the items we initially notice is that lines P and Q are parallel. It could be a good idea to visually denote that those lines are parallel, either perhaps by highlighting those lines to indicate they're parallel, or maybe just putting a scratch line through them so that they're more bold and we remember as we solve that those lines are parallel. Additionally, it will help us to put the given information on the picture. The measure of angle 3 is 64 degrees, and the measure of angle 5 is 38 degrees. Now when we're solving for the other angles in this figure, we're not able to use any results about triangles. We haven't established any triangle results yet. But what we can do, for instance, is look at angles 3 and 4 and say that those two angles are going to be congruent since they're vertical angles. Hence, angle 4 must be 64 degrees. Similarly, angles 5 and 2 are going to be congruent since they are vertical angles, so angle 2 would also be 38 degrees. Next, if we look at the three angles combined that form the top portion of line P, angles 1, 2, and 3 combine to form a straight line. In other words, angles 1, 2, and 3 will combine to be 180 degrees when their measures are added together. Using that notion, if we take 108 minus 64 minus 38, we will get the measure of angle 1. So when we take 180 minus 38 minus 64, we get 78 degrees, and angle 1 will be 78 degrees. Angles 1 and 6 are vertical, so angle 6 will be 78 degrees as well. Now on a problem like this, if it were to appear on an assignment or a quiz or a test, Work would not need to be as extensive here. What we're demonstrating on the screen would suffice. So the next question we have to consider is how will we figure out some of the angles down around line Q? Well, first of all, if we look at the line that was just highlighted in orange as a transversal, we could say a few different things. One of those things would be that angle 6 and angle 14 must be congruent because those are corresponding angles that are formed by parallel lines. Knowing that those two angles are congruent, we will have that angle 14 is also 78 degrees. A second way we could get a similar result is we could notice that angles 2 and 3 glued together correspond to angle 12 when viewing that orange line as a transversal. When we add together the measures of angles 2 and 3, in other words when we take 38 degrees and add 64 degrees, we get 102 degrees. That would correspond equivalently to angle 12 down below. Corresponding angles are congruent when those lines are parallel. So angle 12 would be 102 degrees. One way or the other we could figure out either angle 12 or angle 14. Well then angles 12 and 13 are going to be congruent because they're vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. And similarly angles 11 and 14 will be congruent so angle 11 will also be 78 degrees. For the last part of this problem, we need to figure out these angles 7, 8, 9, and 10. In order to do that, consider the transversal that we have just highlighted in red. When looking at that transversal, angle 4 and angle 9 will have to be congruent. They are corresponding angles formed by parallel lines. Since those angles are congruent and angle 4 is 64 degrees, angle 9 will also have to be 64 degrees. 
And once we get one angle, we can fill in the others because vertical angles are congruent. So angle 8 would also have to be 64 degrees. And then we have linear pairs. 180 minus 64 would give us 116 for both angles 7 and 10. So finally, we would come back and we would answer the original question, looking back into our figure. Angle 6 was 78 degrees. The measure of angle 10 was 116 degrees. The measure of angle 11 is 78 degrees. The measure of angle 13 is 102 degrees. And the measure of angle 14 is 78 degrees. That's our first example. And we have one more example that we will consider in this video. And that is now pictured on the screen. The first thing we might notice in this example is that lines M and N are parallel. And just like in the previous example, let's visually indicate on our picture that those lines are parallel, either by using a highlighter or by scribbling in those lines to make them appear more bold, whatever works for you. However, it is wise to extend them beyond where M and N were initially drawn, just so that we can see the lines a little bit more thoroughly. Let's now also place the given information in the picture. So the measure of angle 1 is 36 degrees. The measure of angle 5 is 64 degrees. And the measure of angle 7 is 37 degrees. Given that information, we need to solve for the other numbered angles in the picture. Let's think about what we could do. First, we could use the left-hand side of the triangle as a transversal. We've just colored that in orange on the screen. Looking at that orange line as a transversal, the corresponding angles it forms with lines M and N must be congruent since those lines M and N are parallel. Therefore, the measure of angle 4 must be 36 degrees. Next, we could use the right-hand side of the triangle as a transversal. It was just colored in red. And using that right-hand side of the triangle as a transversal, angles 7 and 8 merged together correspond with angle 5. When we view that red line as a transversal, and since those angles are formed by parallel lines, we know that the measure of angle 5 has to equal what we get when we glue the measures of angles 7 and 8 together. In other words, we will know that 64 degrees has to equal 37 degrees plus the measure of angle 8. So we set up our equation 64 minus 37 will get us the measure of angle 8, which should be 27 degrees. And then, we'll, then we will label that in the picture as well. Next, let's not overlook that we have a linear pair here with angles 5 and 6 forming a straight line. Since angles 5 and 6 form a straight line, we would take 180 minus 64. That gets us 116 degrees, which should be the measure of angle 6. So now we just have angles 2 and 3 remaining. Take just a few seconds here and see if you can figure out how we can determine the measure of either of those angles. If you want to think about it a little bit longer, you're welcome to hit pause on this video. So here's how we could solve for one of those angles. Let's look at the transversal that we just drew in on the screen right here. In fact, let's make it a deeper blue to really make it stand out. When we look at that transversal, angles 2 and 7 are alternate interior angles because they're on different sides of the transversal and they're between the orange and the red lines. However, angles 2 and 7 would not have to be congruent because they're not formed by parallel lines. But angles 3 
and 8 are also alternate interior angles formed by that blue transversal. They're on different sides of the blue transversal, and they're between the two yellow lines, M and N. Those angles 3 and 8 are formed by parallel lines. Since M and N are parallel, angles 3 and 8 have to be congruent, so angle 3 will have to have a measure of 27 degrees. Be careful. As long as there are alternate interior angles that are formed by parallel lines, that's when we can conclude that the angles themselves are congruent. Well, at this point, we're close to being done because angles 2, 3, and 4, glued together, form a line. So in order to determine the measure of angle 2, we would say the measure of angle 2 plus 27 plus 36 would have to be 180 degrees. Hence, the measure of angle 2 plus 63 would have to be 180, which means the measure of angle 2 would be 180 minus 63, or 117 degrees. Again, if a problem like this were to appear on a quiz or an assignment or a test, work would not have to be overly extensive, but at the same time, think through the problem thoroughly and ensure that each of the requested angles is solved for correctly.